Today we're going to look at finding four and six figure grid references. So on our OS maps to find and locate features on the map, we need to do what's called either a four or a six figure grid reference. If we look at how coordinates are shown on these OS maps, they're done in two different ways. Along this bottom row here, we have what are called your eastings. And along the sides here, so the left and the right, we have what's called the Nordings. The Eastings tell you how far east you're going. So if you have your compass, north is this way, east is here, and we're going to start in the middle. So it tells you how far east you're going or how far right along the map you're going. And your Nordings tell you how far north you're going or up the map as you start from the center, or in this case, as you're gonna start from the bottom left, because all of our maps are projected out in this direction. So the bottom left corner is your starting point, and you are projecting out in a northeasterly direction. In addition to that on OS maps, they have what's called the subzone letter. And this is going to be the big blue letter on your map. So Ireland is divided into 24 different zones. And each of those zones has their own letter for A, B, C, and so on. In this map that we have of Sligo, it happens to be G. And you'll always identify that by the big letter. And when you're writing your grid references then, it always goes in that format. So you're going to start by writing your letter first, whatever the big blue letter on the map is. You're going to write your easting second, so that is telling you how far right something is on the map. And then you're going to have your northings third, and that tells you how far north or how far up along the map something is going to be. Now the best way, I always believe, to learn this is to just practice. So the first thing we're going to look at is our four-figure grid references. And our four-figure grid references don't necessarily require anything too fancy. You're simply looking at the box that something is in and you're writing the coordinates for it. For example, if I had a box here, and let's just say my line here was 18, 19, and going up along the sides it was 60 and 61. What we do is we go to the bottom left corner of the box. So no matter what box it is, we go to the bottom left corner. We go down the line in the bottom left. And that's going to be our eastings. And then we go back to the bottom corner of the same box again. And we go left. And that's going to be our nordings. And then finding our um, big blue letter, our subzone letter. So on this map it's G. And if this just happened to be a box that we were looking at right now. Again, go to the bottom left corner of the box. Go down vertically. So you're going down the vertical line first. So whatever that number is. And in this case it's an 18. Again, bottom left corner of the box, and this time you're going left horizontally, and whatever that number is, is going to be your Nordings. So in this case, the box that I've drawn here would be G1860. Um, and that's going to be the same for no matter what map you're looking at. Always go to the bottom left. Always go to the bottom left. Go down the vertical line for your eastings. And go left. Let's take this out of the way. Horizontally for Nordings. And I know that might seem a little bit counterproductive. Why are we going up and down when our eastings are telling us how far right something is? It's just the way the maps are. It's your vertical lines that are showing you how far east you are. So if you start here at zero, how far east you go is going to be marked by vertical lines. And equally, if you're starting at zero, as you go up along, 
it's the horizontal lines that tell you how far something is and where we can intersect these two boxes or these two lines that's given us our coordinates to give you a better example and then i'll actually go to my map of sligo here and i'm going to find the post office post office example everyone is going to use first because it's such an easy um one to identify if we zoom into our map what we can see is that our post office and again it's my green marker the post office we're going to look at is in this box here so here's our post office and it's going to be in this box here so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the bottom left corner of this box and then we're going to follow the line down horizontally or vertically i should say we're going to follow that line down vertically that gives us our easting which is 68 we're then going to go again down to the bottom left corner of the box and this time we will follow the line horizontally all the way over to get the number 36 and of course don't forget to put in your subzone letter which on this map is a g and so your grid reference for the box here which has your post office in it is g68 because that's our easting and 36 which is our nordings so the the grid reference will always refer to the box if you take the bottom left corner it'll always refer to the box in this direction from it northeast of the point in the bottom left corner sometimes though we want to be a little bit more accurate when it comes to getting our grid references so i could take my same post office um, and this time we might want to do a six figure grid reference for it so we start again with our same grid reference which is g our subzone letter 68 which is our easting and 36 which is our northing but this time we have to do something a little bit different we have to get a sixth figure or in each case a third number that gives us a more accurate location within the box so we're still working in the same box 68 36 the way we do that is we divide our box into tenths now i could start, sit here and i'd spend all day drawing this 10 vertical lines 10 horizontal lines easier to just come to the edge of your page here i think it's a little bit smaller about halfway is going to be five because half five over ten five tenths is a half so halfway across your box and again you're always going from left to right would be a five and in a line you're going to have one two three four five six seven eight nine and then up along the side of the box is going to be the same thing again halfway up roughly is going to be about five so I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. So four, three, two, one, six, seven, eight, nine. I'll just write those in very quickly for you. So we now look at how far across. So how far away from the line 68 is our post office? So again, this is our post office in green. What we can do is take where our post office is and run down to the line here. And that tells us that it's about nine tenths of the way away from the line 68. So we go down to our grid reference, and what we now have is the line 68, so it's in it's easting 68, and it's nine tenths away from that line. So nine tenths of a box away from that line. We go back and we look at our northings. Again, we're gonna mark our heat map and we're going to draw across and we can see that it's roughly one tenth up so this time we're moving up along so how far up the box is our post office and in this case it's about one tenth of the way up the box so if we start at the bottom of the box and went up it's roughly one tenth of the way up and so that means the third digit we're looking at for here is one so that gives us a grid reference an exact location of that post office of g 6893361 now if it's easier for you you can put in a little dot there you can put in a slash 
like it's it's completely up to you if you feel like you need a way to distinguish between them you can but if not you can just leave it exactly like that and that would also be correct this time though i'm going to look at the spot height and this is our spot height here um you don't you don't necessarily need to go for the number i would always go for the dot itself um first thing we're going to do is our subzone letter again in this map it's a g so every map will will every every map for every map the subzone letter in it by and large will be the same sometimes they'll give you two not going to worry about that today the one on this map is a g next thing we go for is our eastings so again we go to the bottom left corner of this map here follow the line vertically and it gets us to 66 again down to the bottom left corner of this map follow the line horizontally gets us to 35 and then this time i'm not going to mark out each one individually i'm just going to roughly mark halfway and halfway and by a rough guess i'm going to guess that that's about two two tenths of the way in from the line so two tenths in this way so i'll put 66 two and my guess is that's about six tenths of the way up so i'm going to put that as a six i'm going to check my answer then i'm going to check my answer by actually filling in the rest of these nine so it's nine eight seven six five four three two one and then it's one two three four five six seven eight nine and if I mark my spot and I come down along, I can see that it is at the two. And I come across, it's roughly at the six, the five or the six. And that brings me to the point I want to make that you never have to be 100% on the money. There's always a little bit of leniency when it comes to those last two digits. So I would suggest that if you put a one or a three instead of two, or you put a five or maybe even a seven instead of a six, they would still award you the marks for it because everyone is going to guess a little bit differently. Unless you get out your measuring tape and actually are a hundred percent accurate, you know it's everyone's going to be a little bit here, a little bit there, um, and so there is allowances made for that in all marking schemes, and that's really important to know as well. If you are still struggling with six figures as references, what I would suggest is you do some practice papers and then you get your teacher to correct them. And realistically, it is practice that gets these right for you. You know, it's very hard to just sit down and learn a formula. It's very much a skills-based thing you've got to do. And the only way to do it is to, is to just go at it and see how you get on. And hopefully this video has been of some help.